Welcome to Impact Duty. I'm your host, Manisha Dadlani Kriplani, bringing you empowering stories of friends and people I admire. Their voices have given me joy and the momentum to share their stories with you. Kirti Tiwani, born in India, raised in Spain and always learning in New York, is an Ayurvedic therapist committed to practicing the wisdom of life. Inspired by her mother's journey of self-healing, Kirti transformed her wellness journey by integrating Ayurvedic practices into her own life. Why Ayurveda? Unlike other medical systems, Ayurveda addresses the root cause to understand what you need to live a life with balance. Hi, Kirti. Welcome to Impact Duty. How are you doing? Good. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. And Kirti, I've been looking forward to chatting with you. But for those who don't know who you are, would you tell us a little bit about yourself? <clears throat> well, my name is Kirti. I am an accidental content creator. Uh, that Ooh. was not <laughs> that was not the goal. Um, I, it just kind of fell into my lap. Um, I am a professional makeup artist. That's my background. I have been in the makeup industry for an extremely long time. And then when the pandemic hit, um, I was like, how close do I want to be to people's faces all the time? You know, and then I had two kids at that point. So traveling was not as easy as it was before the kids. So it was only kind of trying to look into what to do next. So I jumped really quickly and created a supplement brand um, right. without doing any research and everything. And it was very interesting. Um, I actually put a pause on the supplement side of the business earlier this year um, because I was very successful in selling it, but uh -huh. I was failed in managing the supply chain. Ooh. So I had one of the best sellers, which was the sleep aid, uh, number one on Amazon for months, and then I couldn't get the product again. So. I know it It does feel like ouch because I had the opportunity to put the product on the shelf and I couldn't get the product, which um, was a disaster. So someone, a marketing person I spoke to, they were like, well, if you want to sell your products, you know, you should be the face of your brand and maybe you should mm. just um, look at this person and look at that person and you should just become, um, educate people um, online. So I remember uh, I tried becoming an influencer before this, prior to this, bunch of times on Instagram. And I constantly failed every single time because I was trying to be someone, not mm -hmm. myself. Oh. And I had given up so many times. I'm like, this is just not going to work. So somebody said, look at TikTok, you know, the TikTok's coming up. So I created like a few videos on TikTok and then I forgot about TikTok. And then 10 days later, I log on and I see like a bunch of sales coming on the site. I'm like, where is this coming from? And there was wow. no way to track it. So I logged on TikTok and I see a viral video that was generating all of these sales. And that was the day my mind just clicked like, that's it. This is what I need to do. So I actually created my social media platforms to sell my products. Right. Um, but people have asked so many questions in, in every video. Oh, but why not this? And what does this? How does this happen? And I personally didn't have the answers to all of them. So that kind of also forced me to educate myself more. So I went into this deep hole of Ayurveda. And the more you study, the more you, you become fascinated with the subject. You were like... That does make sense. Okay, that's why I feel this way. Because what we're usually taught is like just to see health from one aspect. But mm -hmm. what I teach is, is to see health from all the aspects. And sometimes most of us fail to do that. We only see, oh, I have a leg pain or I have a knee pain or I have hair loss. Like, mm. but what reason? You know, there's not just one reason you could be having a hair loss. There could be plenty of reasons you could be having hair loss. And Definitely. just taking biotin, just taking, you know, a hair loss supplement is, might not fix it, you know, mm. and it could be as simple as lack of sleep. 
if oh, wow. you're just not sleeping enough and that's triggering your hair loss because that is directly related to hair loss. So those tiny little things, the more I learned, the more I was fascinated with the subject. And I think the community itself helped me and forced me to learn about this subject. And that's how I became a content creator. <laughs> wow. Wow. And as you said, you became a content creator and recently you've become a full-time content creator. Um, when did that happen? How did that materialize? Um, what gave you the strength and the belief that, yes, I can go in full time with this? Yeah. Surprisingly, I never reached out to brands in early on. Uh, I had a uh -huh. lot of brands that reached out to me. Uh -huh. Were like coffee brands and I was like I cannot promote coffee like I really does not promote coffee and I'm not saying you should or you shouldn't drink coffee but that's not what aligns with what I educate people right mm -hmm. and like there were so many random brands that reached out and it just never felt correct but then right. um, a lot of beauty brands started reaching out and they were clean they were organic they were um, you know, in, 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 inspired by Ayurveda. It took so long to say that word. But that was where I literally felt so connected because I was able to connect my, my background from beauty. And in that oh. time, every makeup artist, one of the dream was like, I want to have the cleanest products in my kit. And that was like the clean beauty era popping up. And right. everybody, oh, well, this is clean. And there were a lot of um, moisturizers or even foundations that were clean, but not functional for the camera. It was very difficult to find something that would last eight hours without cracking or separating. Right. You know, if you're working on other people, you want something clean, but at the same time, you want something functional. Right. Mm -hmm. And when the, these these brands started reaching out, I was like, yes, absolutely. Send me the product. I'll try it. And a lot of them would just drop out right there when I would say, I want to try it first before I can speak about it. <laughs> really? Oh, I don't know if that. that was just me, but even on, until today, I do not promote a product unless I personally try it for at least, you know, two, three, sometimes even a month. Um right. And I think now brands actually appreciate that because a lot of people want us to feel connected to their brand before we can make a video about it right. rather than, hey, here's a product, just go and speak about it. And yes, um, um, I can write a script, I can speak about it, but if I'm not emotionally connected to it, you know, mm -hmm. if I haven't experienced it, if I haven't felt like really nice, beautiful, soft hair after using that shampoo, I cannot right. speak about it the same way without experiencing the product. Exactly. Um, so, so that is like the one big rule I, I have, like before I promote your product or before I partner with you, I make any commitment with you, I have to try your product. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so Ayurveda has not always been a part of your life um, growing up and, and things like that. It's relatively recent or how far back are we looking at Ayurveda playing a significant role in your life? I would, so, you know, growing up in every Indian household, the first thing is not, oh, you have cough, let's go to the doctor. No, you have cough, mm -hmm. just have some honey. You know, th that was like the entire childhood. And that's, I think, for the most people. But right. right when I, right around when I was getting married, my mom had a bunch of health issues. And um, she started a yoga like really consistently because the doctors gave up on her health. Basically, they were like, surgery is the only option. And she was like, that cannot be the only option. Mm. And after doing it, once you get into the yoga world, you there is no way you're not going to be introduced to Ayurveda. At some point you will be and then you can make a choice of choosing to go that route or not. So right. right after her, I think first year, she somebody told her about Ayurveda. Mm -hmm. And within two years, most of her medications disappeared, you know, and and that was fascinating for me wow. to see, you know. So when people say like, oh, it doesn't work and this, I'm like, the problem is not that Ayurveda doesn't work. The problem is that you're not consistent with it. You know, mm. it just we're all looking for this magical pill most times that I'm going to try pop something, boom, my my problems are going to disappear. But that's what a lot of modern medication does. Mm -hmm. But that's mm -hmm. not that's literally just suppressing the problem or mm -hmm. relocating the problem somewhere else in the body. Mm -hmm. You know, 
but it's not the cure from the root cause because you did not make lifestyle changes. You did not make dietary changes, you know, so it's going to keep coming back. Mm -hmm. And that's what my mother did. She made lifestyle changes. She made dietary changes. She made so many changes that she was able to heal from so many problems that she had. And that was a living example for me. So that was the first step. So whenever, um, you know, when you have kids and you look up more like, oh, what should I do? What should I do? My child right. is, what should I do? My child is sick, what should I do? So that was the real introduction to Ayurveda. But a lot of my mom would say like, don't do this. You know, your pitta is high and this and that. And I'd be like, talk to me in a language I understand. <laughs> <laughs> okay so i'm actually going to tell you to talk to me in a language that i understand okay so we do have words that i've come across and stuff but would you tell me a little bit more about pitta and vata and and i don't know the others go ahead and tell me educate me so Ayur, ayurveda the word itself means uh, ayur means life and veda means wisdom or knowledge so it's like a wisdom of life and a wisdom of knowledge um and um knowledge of life and a lot of people think that Ayurveda is just going to restrict you from a lot of things it's like don't do this don't do this don't do that but what it really is is very intuitive practice like once you start understanding and listening to your own body uh -huh. you know you will know the answers when you have a knee ache or a hair loss or something that's just a symptom that's just a signal your body is giving you something is wrong inside now it's up to you to listen to your body intuitively that, oh my God, where is the problem coming from? Because mm -hmm. most of us like, oh, I have this, I'm just going to pop a pill and mm -hmm. suppress it. Mm -hmm. But that's only going to last for a little bit because we did not address what is causing it. Mm -hmm. So once mm -hmm. we change that mindset, once we shift to it, we know, oh, you know, I eat spicy food and that gives me acid reflux, but it's right. so delicious. And that's most people's um, reaction, but that's causing an imbalance in your body for which you have to take, you know, an OTC to suppress it. But mm -hmm. the problem is spicy food. Mm -hmm. So maybe eliminate that and mm -hmm. start listening to your body more and more and more. You will mm -hmm. get answers. Oh, I have hair loss. The first thing I tell people, sleep more. How many hours are you sleeping? Wow. You know, because a lot of people complain like, oh, my hair, I'm losing. So what are your stress levels like? Mm -hmm. You can do a choppy that will help you reduce your stress, you know, strengthen your follicles and everything. But then if you're sleeping four hours a night, it's not going to do much. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring you back to chumpy so that <laughs> the people who don't. <laughs> don't know what that is you can give us a bit of background on that as well okay so what is chumpy so I absolutely have been I grew up with a lot of chumpy like every every all the time like put so much oil in my hair and okay. uh, even when I so I was I was uh, born in India I moved to Spain when I was 16 17 years old mm -hmm. and uh, I moved here about 11 years ago so mm -hmm. I lived a decade of my life in Spain. It was very humid, very tropical in the Canary uh -huh. Islands, and also very beautiful. But that uh -huh. always kept my hair super frizzy. Uh -huh. And one of the ways I was able to kind of keep my hair down and nice and shiny was oiling my hair. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I never washed my hair without oiling my hair. And that was wow. like the one thing that was very close to me because I know the importance of the hydration you can provide to your hair. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, when people say chumpy, I'm like, oh my God, I have such a special place of chumpy oh, in my sure. life. <laughs> because it's, it's really you, cultural. Yes. And also mm -hmm. like, um, yes, I have premature gray hair, but I have good hair. I have nice thick hair. And you definitely I do. give a lot of credit to uh, Sleep and Chumpy. Wonderful. Thank you. Amla Thank now. You. <laughs> and what, sorry? And Amla now. And Amla, yes, I saw your video on that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm ho I hope I get to uh, focus in on uh, a few great ingredients in Ayurveda. Um, but I'm going to ask you for a pivotal moment in your life. So we know your mom uh, used Ayurveda, used yoga um, as a way to heal. What Was, was there a pivotal moment in your life that 
allowed you to secure your belief in this as a way of life? Was there something that happened to you that you felt, okay, this is why I'm going to use Ayurveda and nothing else? You know, um, it's, it's, it's a very interesting question. I have never been a fan of modern medication um, because that was not a part of my life growing up. Um, and I've always felt like in Spain, when we used to get headaches and stuff, and if you go to a doctor, oh, I have, and they were like, how much have you been drinking? Did you sleep? Did you drink water? Like those were the basic yeah, questions yeah. you would ask, right? And those are not the questions doctors ask here. You're right. So, I've always had home cooked food. I've always had like certain things that people have done here, like they eat out a lot and all of that. I have mm-hmm. not been that person. And even if we were eating out a lot in the Canary mm-hmm. Islands, the food quality was delicious and amazing. It was totally. always cooked with spices. It always had healthy fat. So most yes. of the things that, you know, food wise and life wise that Ayurveda teaches, I was already doing that in my life. And okay. when um, I created my supplement brand and, you know, I was just trying to just sell, 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 sell. It never felt authentic. Right, right. It was just like, make money. But when I shifted that focus to, um, you know, they say chase Saraswati and not Lakshmi. If you chase Saraswati, Lakshmi will come to you automatically. That's the reality of my life. And I love uh, that. Yeah. And the the moment I started seeking for more knowledge, the moment I started seeking for um, education, and I I would, I always say this, like I consider myself a forever student, Uh um, money will come. Like, you don't, the moment you chase Lakshmi, she's going to run away from you. So chase knowledge. People will come to you for your knowledge, your expertise. Mm. They will never come to you for money. They will come to ask money. That's a different situation. But um, if you really want to grow in this life, just Mm -hmm. focus on Just focus on learning all the time, all the time. And everyone else will work out. I really do love that, you know. (laughs) <laughs> and okay. since I hardcore applied that in my life everything uh-huh. changed and and I it blessfully I didn't have to work too hard for it you know it just accidentally kept falling in my lap even now there are some excellent questions that I get from the community and then I have uh-huh. to call the doctors um I know I'm like so how does this work or I'll just open up the book and I'll just try to find the answers to those things right. um that's that's awesome. I think every ounce of knowledge m- makes you a higher version of yourself. Oh, lovely. Yeah, I agree. And Ayurveda is something that's being spoken about a lot now, okay? It's like it's like what yoga was 10 years ago when it's becoming global. We're all talking about Ayurveda. It's not something that's unheard of whether we're anywhere in the West right now. Ayurveda is a term that people are comfortable with. There are a lot of people out there um, saying they're Ayurveda specialists. In this world of so much and so many, how do you first keep relevant? And how do you distinguish yourself from the others out there? I think um, th- for the longest time, I every time I speak to a person, like I'm like, so why don't you do it? The first is like, it's too much. Everybody thinks it's too much. Ayurveda is too much. Everybody's overwhelmed with it. It's very easy to get overwhelmed with it. And the the way I adopted Ayurveda hardcore in my life was one thing at a time. You know, mm-hmm. what can I do? Oh, and I started oil pulling because I did have some oral issues, but then I stick with it, you mm. know, uh, and then oh, waking up early. Okay, let's try to wake up early. Um, doing more pranayama and meditation, let's stick to it. You know, uh, lunch, let's give us a window time for lunch, 12 to 12.30, let's stick to it. You mm. know, and then once you stick to like even small, tiny practices, abhyanga, let's stick to it. You mm. know, all of those things, then they become a part of your life. But if you tell someone, no, you have to wake up early, you have to do this, you have to, they will run full speed away from you. Yeah. I think yeah. that is where I truly feel um, a lot of people say like you make it accessible like because a lot of people like 
I think professionals don't agree with me. They're like, well, you're giving this hack to people and that's not all Ayurveda. I'm like, I agree. That's mm. not all Ayurveda. That's just a tiny little part of Ayurveda. But if this tiny little thing works for someone, they're mm -hmm. going to come back for more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what it happens most of the time. People come back for more. Like, mm -hmm. okay, tell me more. Tell me more. What else can I do? What mm -hmm. else can you give them five practices? And they're like, oh my God, that's a lot. All right, pick one. Pick one. After three mm -hmm. months, pick mm -hmm. another one. Mm -hmm. After three months, if you take if you take six months to adapt that one practice, no problem. Mm -hmm. After six months, add, the, the problem is lack of consistency. Mm -hmm. You know, the crash diets that people go, oh, I lost yes. this much weight because I went. It's lack of consistency because those diets are going to help you lose weight. But the moment you get go back to your normal life, it's going to come back. And the goal is not to adapt one practice and do it for a little bit and call it a day. No, mm -hmm. the, the goal is to adapt that one practice and make it your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. well, you're going to see a long lasting, sustainable change in your life. Yeah, mm, lovely. And I'm I'm going to be cautious and not say, can I use Ayurveda for all ailments? But for most ailments and illnesses, can we use uh, Ayurveda as a... 100%. As a, See, ooh, every, I like everything, that. Has, um, everything has limitations, right? Um, sir, when, when, and we had this discussion uh, at a panel um, I, I heard recently and there was a lot of discussion between the doctors and they're like Ayurveda does not have uh, the aspect of surgery but Ayurveda gave surgery to the world where one of the doctors were like but that is dead science but here's my point right when Wright brothers made airplane um, it was not able to fly across the Atlantic now it is because it's been improvised right it's mm -hmm. been worked on so the totally. same way um, I read that introduced something, but then the modern technology took over and now has a fantastic, like, what is it that we can't fix? There are very few things left that, you know, uh, but so many things can be done with surgery. But along mm -hmm. with those surgeries, if you implement a lifestyle, implement it, implement the mindset that Ayurveda mm -hmm. says, the success rate is much higher than just surgery. Wonderful. So the goal is not if one or the other is superior. The goal is to how do we bridge this gap between the two and take the best of both worlds and implement in our lives? Because innovation, uh, research that is going on right now, we need mm -hmm. that research. All right. Mm -hmm. You know, we need that research. And a lot of it has already been done like five, 6,000 years ago in Ayurveda, but it's just in a text. Right. Mm -hmm. Unless you apply it in your life, there's no way you know it works or not. And people are skeptical. So that research helps people believe in it. So whatever mm -hmm. helps believe in intermittent fasting, right? Yes. In the beginning, it was like a fad. And then there was an article in, um, I, I believe, New York Times. Oh, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe New York Times, there was an article like intermittent uh, fasting is failing. And a lot of people are like, yeah, it was a fake. And yeah, and, I, and then in the end of the article, it says, if you align yourself with the natural circadian rhythm and then do it, uh -huh. it's very really successful. So the problem is because people are abusing the power of intermittent mm -hmm. fasting, right? They're mm -hmm. uh, starting their day at like noon, they wake up at 10 and then eat at two and then have dinner at 10. Like mm -hmm. that is an abuse. <laughs> yes, yes. So it's not the practice itself, it's the way people took the practice. Mm -hmm. So intermittent fasting can be very extremely beneficial for people, lowering their insulin levels, uh, speeding up digestion. And you, now modern science confirms that 70 to 80% of your health lives in your gut. A yes. Healthy is a healthy life. A healthy gut is connected to your brain. Gut is connected to your oral health. And Ayurveda has always said these things. Yes. But I'm wow. glad that modern science is catching up. I am glad that these studies are coming up because it's easy mm -hmm. for me to convince people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're so right, Vicky. And with that, um, I'm going to take an area which I would like you to, to look into with Ayurveda. And I'm going to ask you to do one as well. Okay. So um, I'm going to choose detoxing kidneys. Okay. Detoxing kidneys. 
using Ayurveda. If you could throw some light over there on that uh, topic. And then I'll ask you to choose an area uh, that you want to tackle with Ayurveda or help us um, improve uh, with Ayurveda. Okay, so mine is detoxing our kidneys. It's first, it's not a medical advice. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> disclaimer out there. Okay, disclaimer is out there. It's not a medical advice. Or, yeah. Yes. <laughs> but if you think about it, um, you want to, your body, your kidneys, your liver, your spleen, the natural function of these things is to detox your body, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Our lifestyle, our diet that messes it up. You right. know, too much consumption of unhealthy refined oils, fat, too much consumption of sugar, too much consumption, alcohol, coffee, too much of anything depletes our body inside, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do we do? We slow it down. It's still functioning, but mm-hmm. not at its full potency. So mm-hmm. how do we activate it? How do we speed it up? Don't do it. Don't eat. 24 hours of fasting every two weeks will naturally speed up the detox process by your kidneys. You don't need to do anything else. So sometimes we only focus on adding, oh my God, this supplement and that supplement and this tea and that tea and coffee. Maybe just don't put anything in your body. Let the body naturally do its thing. The problem is happening because we have overconsumed. So let's let's consume it. Let's just eliminate that and body will naturally pick up on its speed unless you have a fatty liver, unless you have all of those things. Mm -hmm. Yes, a mix of herbs, a mix of lifestyle, a mix of diet will hurt. But if you just naturally want to detox your body, Mm -hmm. hydrate, drink water, but go on a food. And if you can't do 24 hours, 12 hours of fasting. Mm -hmm. I'll have lunch today and then I'll not have anything until breakfast tomorrow morning or I will not have anything so if you cannot like if you have to skip a meal skip Mm -hmm. dinner Mm -hmm. most for most people it's easy to skip breakfast because they can sleep in oh I slept in I don't have to eat breakfast switch Mm -hmm. it around skip dinner and that Mm -hmm. will like oh I'm hungry go to bed early you won't be hungry Mm -hmm. Sleep, then again, you're sleeping better. You're aligned with the natural circadian rhythm and your body will detox naturally. So again, you ha- have to really look inside your body. Mm-hmm. What am I overdoing? Mm-hmm. Let me eliminate that. Am I eating too much roti? Let me eliminate that. Am I eating too much rice? Let me balance that. Am I not getting enough vegetables? Let- so you have the answer. One of the easiest ways to detox your kidney, your liver, everything is just fast. Oh, just I love that. intermittent consistent intermittent fasting can help you speed up your metabolism and that's the whole goal that's the one of the ways to live very healthy is like not put too much we this three meal thing is already a very modern thing mm-hmm. earlier people would eat when they were hungry lunch was eaten around you know 11 30 12 and then dinner was eaten around four or five. And then people would go to bed by eight, nine. Like that was the norm. Yeah. And then they would wake up, they would do things. People would like, if you eat a nice heavy um, lunch, not overdone, but like a full lunch, you are not hungry. Like a lot of people like, well, when I eat dinner at 6 p.m., I get hungry at eight or nine. Like that's because you did not eat a good lunch. Mm. Mm. So good yeah. stuff, Katie. Good stuff. I, just... I was I was giggling about the 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 fasting bit for twenty four hours because this is a debate that I've just had with my husband. Mind you, my husband's from the Canary Islands as well. Uh, he's from oh. Las Palmas. Yeah, which island are you from? Ah, uh, Fuerteventura. Ah, uh, nice. Okay, all right. So um, it's a debate I actually had with my husband because. I keep saying we need to do intermittent fasting 16, 8 at max, but not the 24 hour one. And wow, you've just flipped that on uh, on its head for me. And <laughs> I've got to let him win. win you don't this have show. to. See, everybody. But it's a good thing. Not, yeah, it's a good thing once in a while. You know, if you can just like once every two weeks or even once a month, if you can just eliminate food for 24 hours. But then uh-huh. again, when you go back to eating, be mindful of what's going in your body. You right. know, 
your body has taken a rest for 24 hours. Don't dump a hamburger after like, you know, eat something slow, something warm, yeah. something nourishing, something easily, uh, easy, something that's easy on digestion. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about fasting. It's also about how you treat your body after you fast and then how you get slowly back into uh, this, this rhythm that, that you can create for your body. Great. And um, I was going to ask you for your side on any issue you'd, you'd like to highlight using Ayurveda. Um, hair loss, because it's one of the most common ones and a lot of people ask. So we've already spoken about sleep. Um, mm -hmm. Why I am probably the biggest fan of Amla in the world. Um, no, that's just a self-proclaimed claim. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm singing the ad in my uh, in my head. You know the Dabaram Lakeshti. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not trying to shame, but that's not Amla. Like that, that's some other stuff that nobody should be using. <laughs> that's not okay. Amla. If you actually read the ingredients, it's full of mineral oils, and they do not belong in your scalp. Okay. Uh, yeah. but, Tell me the um, real deal. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, it's consuming amla internally and, and even applying amla or amla extract or, you know, something with amla oil externally can actually be very beneficial for your health. Now, modern science is also doing some research on aging with amla. And in uh, Ayurveda, amla is the biggest rasayana herb, to, you know, to prevent the aging. And up to a certain extent, it can correct. And modern science is actually catching up um, mm -hmm. on a gut microbiome called urolithin A, which um, after your body metabolizes amla, it uh -huh. is naturally occurring. And that has the potential to not just prevent um, aging, but also reverse up to a certain extent. Um, there is a big research going on on urolithin A, which is naturally found in amla, and um, the other one is pomegranate, but I'll stick to amla. Oh, and okay. what, is, what is fascinating to me with amla is um, I can get my pitta out of balance very quickly, right? That causes the premature gray hair. So since I've started taking amla, the emotions have kind of cooled down the gut has kind of normalized um and it's consistent use and then i like i was like my gray hair was just on a full speed turning gray which has paused and i'm very mm. happy with that even if it doesn't reverse a pausing is a big achievement for me now amla is rich in vitamin c extremely rich in vitamin C. Uh, there is some modern research also saying that humans uh, don't have enough vitamin C in the body. So what happens when you don't have vitamin C in the body, your body is not able to absorb enough nutrients from food. Mm -hmm. When you have enough vitamin C, your body is able to, to um, extract more nutrients from the food that you're eating. And that, mm -hmm. those are the things that Ayurveda had already mentioned a long time ago, like eat amla because it helps with nutrient absorption. Modern science is now catching up. So everything is right there, in but in different forms, you know, uh, vitamin C, according to Ayurveda, amla. So the research is there, everything. And that's why I feel like everyone should consume amla unless, you know, you have some underlying conditions, then you need to speak to your doctor. But amla itself is a excellent rasayana keeps the blood flow in check, um, keeps your emotions a little calm if you have pitta dosha. And uh, it is, for me, has become this um, very fascinating herb that I keep educating myself more and more about. So it, it is one of the biggest rasayana herbs uh, in Ayurveda, which is rejuvenation herb. And just looking at my hair, I'm like, that's rejuvenation. Rejuvenation is not just the skin, right? Mm -hmm. It's also the hair. And the fact that I have been able to slow down this progressive premature graying that I was on is a big uh, accomplishment for myself. But again, it's not just Amla. It's also sleeping well. It's also mm -hmm. meditating. It's also breath work. It's also working out consistently. It's it's a combination of all of those. But I would say that Amla does has played a big role in um uh, in everything. Lovely. Oh, lovely. So then, for people 
like us. I mean, you're over there in the States, I'm here in Switzerland. How do we access Amla? I mean, I, I don't see Amla in the local shops over here, or am I missing mm -hmm. something? Uh, no, you won't. You probably will need to go to a specialty shop. And I always recommend Supplement Market, from my experience, um, uh -huh. is a very easy market. You do not want to buy, because it's an unregulated market, you do right. not want to buy your supplements from a random company. Right. Buy your supplements from a company you trust. I believe uh, Organic India is one of them. Um, and I have dived deep into their sourcing and everything, not promoting anything yes. here, but yes. just like yes. if you need a suggestion, and I do believe they um, sell in 40 countries around the world, um, uh -huh. I can do it myself. So it's it's a great company that people could potentially use in Europe if you have access to it. Um, right. And that's the only company I believe I know the sourcing mm -hmm. coming from. So, and mm -hmm. every time you take supplements, um, you should do a little bit of research on where those supplements are coming from. Europe, on the other hand, has a lot more regulations than than the US, which is a great thing. It is. Uh, but still, I believe every, every supplement that you consume, you should know where it's coming from. Totally. Because it's going in your body, right? Totally, totally. And- um, as we discussed earlier, we know Ayurveda has received a lot of global recognition lately. Um, what would you like to see more accepted within the field? Like, what would you like to see more accepted, more integrated, both in India and across the globe? What would you like? Belief. People don't believe that Ayurveda is able to help you with so many issues mm -hmm. and then they practice that for a little bit and then they go back to their medication They're like, it's not working well you don't believe in it mm -hmm. the first mm -hmm. thing that, that anything you want to work for you you need to believe in it and I think I want people to believe in the practice more so so it starts working for them placebo mm -hmm. is a real thing <laughs> so mm -hmm. you need to actually believe that yes I'm going to fix this Yes, I'm going to make this change. Yes, I'm going to take this practice into my life and this will change my life and it will change your life. Mm. And maybe you still need some support from modern medication and that's fine, but you need you need to start with believing into the practice because mm -hmm. it's even a lot of people who hear all of these stories. Oh, you know, um, modern medication, as far as I know, has no cure for vitiligo. Uh, has mm. no so many skin diseases, you know, chronic eczema and all of that. It's just suppress, suppress more mm -hmm. supplements, more steroids, more um, medication, more uh, ointments. But right. it focuses on the root cause of where are these coming from. No dermatologist is going to mm -hmm. tell you your eczema is because you eat maybe too much garlic, not you know too much onion, and that's causing too much inflammation in your body. No. Nobody focuses on the gut. They'll just give you the same tube that they give to 10 other people and ask you to apply it. Right. You know, but there are doctors in India that are reversing vitiligo, Ayurvedic doctors. There are doctors in India that are consistently working with psoriasis and eczema and, you know, all of these chronic skin conditions that modern medication just has um, a, a way to suppress it. So, when people start believing in it, and most times people go to Ayurveda when nothing else is left, no other options are left. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the last resource. That's the last, maybe go there early before the problem right. is not super bad. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And that will only happen if people believe in it. People believe in modern medication, but people don't believe the same way in Ayurveda. Wonderful. And um We've already touched upon how if we want to just make sure we're we're getting the right products in, we should do our research. Okay. Um, give me an example of how I can take this forward. Give me the steps I need to do. So say, for example, I'm going to try and imbibe or, or introduce um, Ayurveda in my life on a on a step by step, uh, in a step by step way. And I want to try my hand at a few products. What do I need to do? What do I need to do? Anything going internal in your body. Mm -hmm. um, if you're 
don't consume it for a long time because no medications are candy. It's right. medications. Ashwagandha is a medication in Ayurveda. I see people mm-hmm. just popping pills as if it's like, oh, it's going to, how is the same pill going to help you sleep, going to make you go strong? Mm-hmm. It's it's compounds. It's mixtures. It's it's mm-hmm. not like I see like um, so many companies have now created ashwagandha jelly uh, gummies. And then by the bedside, they'll show it in the gym locker. I'm like, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's not mm-hmm. all right. So before you decide to consume an herb for an extremely long time, um, speak to a, a professional, speak to a practitioner, a doctor, or someone. Don't self-diagnose issues for a long right. time. If you want mm-hmm. to take me like you know twice, uh, uh, two times in a month, just to like generally cleansing. Okay, but that too, you have to make sure you don't have any underlying conditions. Mm-hmm. How to do the research of where they're coming from, go to the website of the company, send them mm. an email, ask mm. for testing reports. They're, they'll all give them to you. You know, yeah, you can. Do, I, I do that all the time. Um, you can literally send them a customer service, an email. Hey, I would like to see the testing report of the current batch of this thing that you're selling. And it will tell you how much um, arsenic is there, how much heavy metals, like all of that report you can ask from the company. Wow. There's no reason they need to hide that. Then I think right. at this point, companies should publish. A lot of companies do publish those reports. Like I uh-huh. read some companies and I suggest them, you should publish these reports openly. And they did that. And it's very easy for people to just go click, click, click. Okay. I see the current batch. I see this. And that's helpful. Great. And taking a look at you, um, how do you reach out to your community and how do you impact us? I think I uh, the community impacts me more by asking <laughs> questions and helping me learn. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, but the goal is to make Ayurveda accessible to everyone. And that's why um, I, I focus a lot on beauty in, in the world of Ayurveda because I feel like that's what my where my passion lies. But I also constantly want to remind people, beauty is not just this external thing that you see. It actually starts from the inside out. So if you are working on your body from the inside, the food, the diet, the sleep, emotions, because uh, we see health as just physical health. We forget mm-hmm. that we have an emotional health. We have a spiritual health. Mm-hmm. And when we're able to connect connect you know this mind body soul connection um you will be living the best life you have you'll be living at your best even if you have problems you'll be able to manage them uh much better rather than just you know running around with without knowing what's next Mm -hmm. thank you and so i asked you how you impacted us or how you impact would impact us and now my turn to ask you what would you like to see manifest in the near future for yourself personally and professionally what would you like to see happen um i would like to be it's a very interesting question um i have certain goals like financial goals spiritual goals um uh, health goals um, and for the longest time one of my health goal was to have a six pack and before I had kids I had them but now I have just replaced that goal uh, from having like you know a nice uh, six pack to like staying healthy having you know being fitting in my clothes and uh, blessfully I have not changed much in size in the past 20 years so um you know the goal is not the size doesn't matter what matters is if you feel healthy so uh, just simple goals of educating myself more constantly um uh, one of the goals that i do want and i envy a lot of people is to become a better reader Um, every time I start reading after like 10, 15 pages, I start to fall asleep. It's a good problem for a lot of people. Yes. Someday like to get to 50 pages before I fall asleep. (laughs) (laughs) I'm a very slow reader. Um, and yeah, I think the reading would be, and uh, uh, oftentimes I tell myself, you know, maybe I just need to go away, just take like four books for four days. And the goal is like, knock them out. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's the one aspect that I really want to focus on in life, like become uh, a better reader. Um, 
I do read quite a bit, but I can only read in bits and pieces because after mm. like 10, 15 pages, I'm like, oh, even if it's yeah. an interesting chapter. <laughs> so better reader. Um, I don't have too many complaints. I'm happy in life. I'm content in life. I feel that whatever life is giving me is... Um, um, not that I manifested, but um, it's better than what I actually manifested. So now I'm just here with my open arms. All right, whatever you have planned for me, I will take that instead of me asking you constantly to give me something because I feel like what you have planned for me is probably better than what I'm going to ask you for. Wow. Kirti, thank you. Thank you very, very much. It's been so lovely chatting with you. I can't believe I've not actually met you in person, but um, I felt so comfortable talking to you. And thank you for enlightening me on Ayurveda. And uh, you've definitely got me inspired to try out one or two things. First and foremost on my list is getting more sleep. I, I keep not giving enough essence and significance to uh, my sleep and sleep patterns and honestly I'm walking away from this interview with at least that if not more as my nugget of wisdom so thank you very very much Katie take care for, for having me here's a tip of making your sleep um, important um, have a bedtime ritual mm. then you're gonna look forward to it like massage your, wash your feet, massage them a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, have your face mask on and then read a little bit. I do these things. And then just, you know, until you're like really ready to fall asleep. Because when you pamper yourself, you look forward to those moments. Like, oh my God, this is me time. Like I need, I need this like 15 minutes for myself. Or even if it's two minutes that I need to really nicely massage my feet and then put them on and put my LED. Now I got this LED mask, which I'm actually loving and put that on and then try to just take a few deep <laughs> breaths and then just like rewind what happened in the day and and then go to bed and that's actually um everybody can create their own bedtime rituals but then you look forward to getting in bed at a certain time wow thank you <laughs> <laughs> take care Katie. take care thank you so much for having me my pleasure bye-bye